Nurse Yux is examining Blade's condition. The results are fairly decent, around 30%. Blade asks if it means he can use his powers at around 30%. As it turns out, no, it means Blade is likely to die if he uses his powers at 30%. After the examination, Claire summons Blade while he's walking through the school hallway. Besides Claire, there's a fair-haired girl wearing glasses. Her name is Maria. Blade actually remembers the girl. Maria was on the magic team when they fought against Chu. He remembers that Maria often stumbled during practice and produced peculiar fireballs. Unbeknownst to Blade, he had caused Maria to lose her confidence. Worse yet, Blade referred to her as a clumsy kid. Setting that aside, Maria seems to want to ask for Blade's help. And unexpectedly, Maria asks Blade to kill her. Maria is currently taken to the cafeteria to explain the deeper meaning of her request. Apparently, Maria wants Blade to kill her when she can't control herself. In reality, Maria is not human. Blade had suspected that Maria is a night demon. Within Maria, there's a fiercely powerful demon, a separate entity from her. This entity appeared once when Maria was in a difficult situation. Suddenly, the teacup she was holding shattered. That's what happens if she misjudges her strength. Until now, Maria had been able to control it. But since the battle against Chu, she's been struggling. Blade theorizes that her demon's power will surge uncontrollably when she's highly spirited in combat. In other words, if left unchecked, a demon will manifest from within her. However, Maria has no place other than this academy. Maria graduated from Rosewood Middle School, just like Claire. She doesn't know her parents. She doesn't even have a home to return to. Therefore, Maria wants to overcome the power within her. Blade agrees to help her, understanding the feeling of not having parents. It's not Justin, Sophie, Arnest, Claire, Jessica, Cassine, Clay, Leonard, and even Chu are willing to assist. Later in the afternoon, they all headed to the battle arena. Blade asked Claire and Jessica to infiltrate the control room to adjust the demon power resistant walls to their maximum strength. This way, the power that Maria had been holding back could be fully unleashed. Nevertheless, Maria still hesitated to do it. Blade informed her that this method had proven successful with Arnest. Arnest herself convinced Maria to follow Blade's plan, even though she admitted it was a foolish plan. Blade and Arnest then playfully teased each other about their foolishness. Seeing their interaction, Maria decided to trust her friends. Afterward, Maria removed the seals from her right hand. With that one object, she could release half of her power. Then, she did the same with her left hand. Not only there, she also had the same objects on her right and left legs. Maria's current strength increased 16-fold. Lastly, she revealed a pendant she was wearing. She claimed it was her strongest seal. The pendant could weaken her to one-tenth of her power. If she removed the pendant, Maria would become 160 times stronger. As she removed it, Maria couldn't contain the entity that emerged from within her. The being before them resembled Maria, but had horns and a pair of wings. Its voice became deeper. It also bore a mark on its forehead. Blade recognized the mark as that of a demon king. Before long, Arnest transformed into her demon form and fought against Maria. Unfortunately, Arnest was easily tossed aside with a simple wave of Maria's hand. Leonard's attempted attack proved futile as well. Next, Sophie used her custom hero power, ultimate gravity, to bring Maria down. Sophie immediately fainted after exerting such immense power. However, this provided an opportunity for Chu to unleash a tremendously powerful fire. Yet, Maria absorbed the fire and redirected it back at Chu. Finally, only Blade remained. At first, Blade attacked with an unsheathed sword. However, it seemed he couldn't win unless he took the fight seriously. When Blade unsheathed his sword and attacked Maria, the sword wasn't strong enough and almost cracked. Maria retaliated, emitting a laser as hot as the sun. Blade managed to withstand it, but the sword he was using ended up shattered. Unsteadily, Arnest urged Blade to use his sword, as Madius. With that, Blade decided to end the battle in a single strike. 
He gathered such immense power that even Asmadius wasn't sure if it could contain it. The slash from Blade's attack had an extraordinary effect. Maria hadn't anticipated her protector cracking, and she was ultimately defeated by the strike. After using that final attack, Blade felt his body weakened and suddenly he lost consciousness. Once Blade had regained consciousness, he found himself in the school's infirmary. The nurse was deeply concerned about him. Blade had briefly died, and had the treatment been delayed even a bit, he might not have been saved. Seeing the nurse so distraught, Blade promised not to push himself that hard again. Meanwhile, the other friends weren't severely injured, including Maria. However, there was one notable difference. Maria still retained her demonic form. When she encountered Blade, she referred to him as a hero, which raised his suspicions about her true nature. Blade quickly tried to hush her and asked her not to discuss it. Suddenly, he revealed that Maria and himself were different people. He didn't even know his own name, as he had never been given one. Yet, other students who met him called him Mal. Afterwards, Blade and his friends went to the principal's office seeking an explanation. It turned out that he was the one who brought Maria to the academy. He also knew her true identity. Maria's mother was a human who had unfortunately passed away. As for her father, the principal was unsure if he was still alive or not. But he knew who he was, the Demon King. This meant that Maria was the child of the Demon King. After absorbing this information, they encountered Mal, who was chatting with other students in the garden. They were a bit concerned about letting Mal roam freely. However, Mal mentioned that he was interested in attending school. As the bell rang, Mal left for class. After Mal left, Claire asked why Maria hadn't appeared again, and only Mal was present. She worried that she might never be able to meet Maria again. During the night, Blade heard a knocking sound on his window. As expected, Mal was waiting outside. He mentioned that he wanted to take Blade on a date, having heard about her from his classmates. Blade was still uncertain, but suddenly, Mal lifted Blade into the air. Curious, Blade inquired about Mal's age. He felt that Mal seemed to lack a lot of knowledge. Mal responded that he became aware of his existence five years ago. However, for demons, age isn't relevant. Furthermore, as a woman, she disliked being treated like a child. Nevertheless, Blade still didn't see her as a woman, even though Mal was obsessively infatuated. With him, he couldn't understand why Mal was so fixated on him. What's clear is that Mal had decided to leave once she killed Blade. Additionally, Mal informed Blade that she couldn't simply remove her pendant. Within her, there was the consciousness of Maria who resisted. Maria was currently hiding in the depths of her heart. Within her heart was a whirlpool of darkness. Since childhood, she had been shunned and hated by humans. She continued to hide and survive with just her mother. Her mother believed in her father, but not Maria. When her mother passed away, Maria's heart shattered with doubt. She questioned her father's love for her mother and blamed her suffering on him. Thus, Mal was born as a way to escape all those painful emotions. A few days later, a short, bespectacled girl informed them that she had looked into the information about Maria's pendant. Apparently, the pendant wasn't an item for sealing. Either way, the girl's name was Eliza. Despite that, Mal felt that her power was restricted by the pendant. Eliza hadn't fully analyzed it, but she speculated that the pendant might function as a recording device could possibly contain a message from someone. According to Maria's memories, the item was a memento from her mother. Eliza mentioned that the recording held a message that could help Maria. In other words, a way to remove Mal, the Demon King. Following this, they decided to play the recording within the pendant. Claire felt that Mal didn't need to disappear to be replaced by Maria. However, Mal said that one of them was indeed destined to vanish. After Eliza prepared the pendant, Mal opened it to reveal a projection of her father, the Demon King. He conveyed a message to Amelia, Maria's mother. The Demon King apologized for leaving her and didn't mind being hated. He had a duty to fight his enemies, but he didn't want Amelia involved in bloodshed. Not for any particular reason, but he had his motives. Perhaps Amelia hadn't realized it, but the Demon King knew she was carrying his child. 
He had names prepared whether it was a boy or a girl. If a boy or this if a girl Maria. The demon king asked Amelia to convey something when the child was capable of understanding. Tell them their father had passed away. The demon king's war that he always loved Amelia and their future child. After the recording ended, Mal shed tears. She could no longer control her body. It seemed she was losing in the battle of souls. Mal had come to accept that she would be defeated by Maria. She requested them to call out Maria's name so she could return. Once called, the tearful figure before them was none other than Maria. At the end of the episode, it appeared that Blade was about to engage in a battle with Maria and the arena. Suddenly, Maria removed her glasses, and in an instant, her form transformed into Mal. It turned out that Mal's personality hadn't vanished, perhaps because Maria wanted to coexist with her.